Welcome to this session uh, on uh, inexpensive data masking for MySQL with ProxySQL. So uh, I have the honor to present this with uh, René. First, oh, some slide. So welcome to this last day of Procona Live. First, yeah, just the usual uh, slide here. So who are we? So let René introduce himself. Hi, so I'm René. I work as MySQL SRE at Dropbox, and I'm also the founder of Proxy SQL. I am Frédéric Descamps, so Le Fred. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I am working uh, uh, in, at MySQL as a MySQL evangelist. And uh, I am quite old in this MySQL world. Uh, so uh, as far as, as I remember, I was using MySQL in 3.23. And I'm a DevOps uh, believer. Please, if you are still running 3.23, you need to upgrade. Uh, watch out. Uh, don't keep it uh, running. So, yeah, I'm sorry about this, but uh, if you have a time machine, uh, you can go to other session uh, about ProxySQL, but they are all in the past. So, uh, but you can still download the slides and um, have a quick overview of what was being covered on the session. As you can see, ProxySQL is quite... Uh, a very popular product currently because it has a lot of session uh, at the um, at the conference. So this is a list of non-users. Mm, yes. So basically, this is a list of non-users. Unfortunately, because the product is open source, and uh, unfortunately or fortunately, it depends. And uh, you can freely download it without subscribing, and it is just download the uh, the package on GitHub. It's very difficult to track who are the users. And um, but some of them were okay in, uh, in me knowing who they are and being listed. So here I put together a few few companies that are currently using it. Yeah. So what is Proxy SQL? The way I like to define Proxy SQL is, and if you have been in, my, in another of my session, I, I would like to define it as the data gateway. The reason why the MySQL data gateway, the reason why I would like to define it this way is because it basically it creates a separation between the application and the database server. So more than connecting them, like any other proxy could do, like whatever is the application wants, the proxy just connect to the database server. Instead, the, the proxy proxy SQL is able to understand all the traffic that is passing through the proxy and takes action based on this. And action can be a variety of them. Like an action could be to block some traffic and this is actually uh, one of the things we are going to discuss or modify the request that the application is, is sending to the proxy. And again, this is something that we are going to cover. And of course, it can perform way other more, more tasks like performing connection pooling, multiplexing, deciding where a query should go, and so on. And uh, one important thing I really like to, to highlight when speaking about proxy SQL as, as a gateway is that proxy SQL is a reverse proxy. So instead of forwarding to the client, sorry, instead of forwarding to the base server what the client is sending to the proxy, the client execute some queries to the proxy and then the proxy will eventually execute the same query or another request to the database server. Yes. Um, breaking news, uh, Proxy SQL 1.4.0 was released Sunday, so just a few days ago. It has a lot of new functionality. We have listed them here. Yes. So uh, one of the most important thing is native support for MySQL group replication. So Proxy SQL always had the possibility of being um, cluster, MySQL cluster agnostic, so you could have any sort of clustering behind, behind Proxy SQL, either asynchronous replication, NDB, Galera, or even group replication. But the native support for those clusters was always very limited, and was this was not necessarily a bad thing, because it was possible to extend and customize the, all the health check on the backend using custom script that the proxy is able to execute. In 1.4.0, the support for group replication is now embedded in Proxy SQL, and this just simplifies a lot of the maintenance. 
it has uh, now it has two uh, regular expression engine. Historically, there was only one uh, regular expression engine that was the Google RE2, and now with 1.4, it also supports the. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Now it's also support PCRE, and the reason why in 1.0 well, there is support for those two regular expression is that the former regular expression was normally faster for most of the workload, but it has some limitation. And now the regular expression uh, semantic has been expanded with the introduction of PCRE. And uh, the internal database that ProxySQL use has been uh, I won't say rewritten because the core is always the same as SQLite, but the wrapper around it has been rewritten, so it now has way better performance. And another interesting functionality is that it is able to constantly, um, how to say, that now there is a thread that is able to understand if a connection to the database server can be recycled in a different way than the way it was implemented in 1.3. Because in 1.3, if Proxy SQL was detecting that one connection was not safe anymore to be shared, it was destroying it. Now in 1.4, instead, that connection is passed to a special thread that its own task is to reset those connections. Um, Transaction persistent, if you're familiar with, with what it is, is basically if you're running a transaction in Proxy SQL, by default does not disable uh, query routing while the transaction is running. And this was intentional and configurable, but apparently it created a lot of confusion uh, in the way transactions are handled. So now the default has been changed, so it is normally safer. Minor things, is also run on FreeBSD and Mac OS 6. Again, way faster than 1.3. There are a lot of memory, uh, memory management improvement. This is to improve performance. Yes, this is something actually very interesting. Um, there is one specific use case there. Uh, so at the very beginning, Proxy SQL was not designed to have a lot of users. Um, there was never a limit on the number of users that could have uh, process. But somebody came to me, and they are using Proxy SQL in a web hosting, and they have more than 100,000 users in Proxy SQL. And I was like, okay, it, it's not optimized for that many users. So it was now it is optimized, and it can handle a very large amount of user 40 times faster than the previous version. And similarly, you can have a very large number of uh, database server. In fact, operation has been tested with up to 20,000. MySQL server behind one single proxy, and 1.4 handled them way faster than 1.3. And surprise, surprise, is GPL, you can have as many database servers you want. So 20, if you have 20,000 servers behind one proxy, you can do it. Okay, so yes, this is another slide with a few more information about what 1.4 support, it has way more metrics. Uh, if you are familiar with mirroring, that is the ability of sending, of mirror some traffic, all or some traffic that is passing to the proxy to another server and even rewrite it eventually. In 1.4, this has been improved a lot, so it's able to process way more QPS. Has the ability of reload the configuration file without restarting the proxy. This was a very interesting feature request that somebody asked because Basically, you can reconfigure the proxy just sending queries to it, and after you send queries, you just issue some command, and the configuration is reloaded. But somebody wanted to replace the database files underneath Proxy SQL and have Proxy SQL reload it automatically. So now 1.4 can do this. For what set auto commit, this is again a very interesting feature because so far set auto commit was not sent to any database server. This was by design because if you're using it on a very sharded environment with uh, hundreds of database server, the proxy normally doesn't know where it has to send uh, the set auto commit. So what it does, what it was doing until 1.3 is to track the status. So it basically it says the client won't set auto commit, set zero to one. And then when the client sends some other query, it will set auto commit in the, in the right connection. Now 1.4, you also have the option to specify 
if such auto commit is being executed forwarded to this specific server. It has way more advanced multiplexing, so now you can enable or disable multiplexing at, uh, at runtime based on the query. So you can say some query enable multiplexing while some other query are able to, uh, to re enable it again. Yes, yeah, so this is part of it. And this is a very interesting feature that it makes the algorithm behind query routing way more complex, uh, but I think it's way too much for this session, so we should skip. Yeah. And data masking. Thank you. So, um, do you hear me? Sorry. Data masking, so or data obfuscation is the process uh, of hiding uh, original data with random character set or data, right? Uh, so, and this is the session, the, the main reason of this session, right? And why sh we should do that? It's, for example, when we have data that is sensible data and you don't want to provide data for your staging environment, for your developers, or something like that, you will be, it's very difficult to, um, let's say, to, to do that currently in MySQL, right? Uh, I, how many here uh, are using uh, the, the columns, uh, granting just some columns to, to users? One person? Okay. So it's not very popular, <laughs> this, uh, and I, I don't see that uh, very often. So we will try to, uh, to explain you here uh, how we can do that. So why we should use uh, uh, Proxy SQL as a data masking uh, solution? It's because uh, it's open source and free. So this is the inexpensive of the title. It's already reached, so that's nice. Uh, other solutions are very expensive or not working. So I don't know who is here using other solution or is using a, a solution, a commercial solution for uh, data masking? Nobody? Open source solution? You are using an open source? Custom solution. Custom solution. Easy to implement? No. Okay, so this is also uh, one reason. And uh, to be honest, I didn't try much uh, closed source uh, solution, but uh, I tried some open source solution uh, in the past and they were not really uh, well working. There, I have seen some in Python, then the project was just uh, given up because it's a very uh, c complicated task. And uh, so this solution is not worse than other solution, but uh, be careful, no solution is perfect. So even the solution we're gonna talk to you today may have uh, some issue. So uh, we are not able to test everything, so we try to, and we, we got some feedback. Uh, but uh, so uh, if you really have sensitive data, be careful on what you do, and uh, it's not because you will Im implement this, uh, this stuff that it will work uh, for you on, on everything. So w watch out on that. You have been warned, don't just complain to, to Rene and say, yeah, I tried the rules you gave me, and, uh, but somebody was able uh, with some, uh, some stuff um, to, to go uh, to pass that, right? The best uh, solution would be to have this in the server, of course, right? Uh, and just after the Angular API. So you ask some data and the storage engine send the data to the server and the server change it for you. That would be the ideal solution. Uh, but it is not the case, so, uh, or not, not yet. So the concept of proxy SQL. For you. So the concept of how query rules uh, works are very simple. So basically, you need a way to configure the pro proxy SQL to do some action. And the way you do this is creating query rules. Query rules are specifically in proxy SQL, you can configure them as um, rows inside a table that is a configuration table. And you have some columns that define the matching criteria for some traffic, and other columns that define the match criteria, sorry, the action that needs to be performed on. Um, on those on this traffic, the matching criteria can be uh, username, schema name, uh, the digest, uh, the digest text, or a matching on uh, the real query, or other things like the source IP, the IP of the proxy, the port of the proxy, and so on. And the action, the action could be again send it to one specific host group, block the traffic, rewrite it, and of course, in this session, we are going to speak specifically about the rewrite. You can do other things like setting, caching, and so on, but specifically in this session, we're going to speak about the rewrite. One other important thing is that it's not just 
uh, one rule that you need to create, but you can also create a chain of rules. So you can say that what uh, one rule does is nothing more than setting what is the next rule that needs to be executed. So you can have some sort of flow control inside uh, the query rules itself. So specifically, here we are going to speak about query writes. So again, the way of doing it is that you match a pattern and you specify how this pattern needs to be written. And of course, the application is not aware that we are doing any sort of modification. It's completely transparent to the application. Yeah, so without the client being aware on the flight, again, this is something very important. So you don't need to restart the proxy. You just configure the proxy and the proxy will do all the magic for you. And specifically, the way the rewrite is performed is using a regular expression. So a very simple match and replace. Uh, in the previous version, the match and replace was quite limited. So this is why in 1.4.0, this has been, uh, now there are two uh, regular expression engines, so to extend the, the available syntax. So, uh, does it work now? One, two. Yes. Okay, so uh, what we are doing here, so we will use regular expression, and this is why uh, Rene uh, implemented this in 1.4.0, uh, um, is because the, the engine that was using was not enough to do this uh, regular expression that uh, we need to try to, to, to catch the, to change the query. So what we do is that the client sends a query, and the proxy catch it, change the query, to send it to the to the um, uh, to the MySQL server and get the, the data back. So the change is done before it, it's sent to the to the cluster uh, to the MySQL server, right? Uh, and so uh, it is the proxy that will decide what kind of change we will, we want to do. Do we want to uh, uh, let's say mask everything so you don't see anything, or do we want to uh, just uh, remove the column, or do we want to uh, give fake data, because you say, oh, why do we have fake data? Sometimes it's interesting to have just data that you can still work with, but it's not uh, the reality, right? So we will split our solution uh, into uh, different, uh, so, um, yeah, different solutions, provide access to the developers, so we want pro to provide the database. Watch out, this is not the best solution, because like I said earlier, some, they may get over the rules. They may find some syntax or something like that that will uh, that your rules that we're going to create are not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, concrete proof, right? So watch out on that. But if this is the only solution you have, and if you can control the query, it's possible. And Proxy SQL can help you to control the query, or generate a dump to populate database uh, to share. So for example, you have your production with all this sensible data, you want to create a dump very easily, and uh, you don't want to be the one always doing that dump uh, for them. You can let them do only the dump, so it's possible that they just connect, make the dump, but the data inside of the dump, it's already uh, masked or obfuscated. So this is, uh, uh, I think this is the, the best uh, approach and the safest approach uh, currently. Uh, of course, you need to. We will only use some users, so not everybody that will use the proxy will. Yes. Yeah, using views, but using views will be out of the of this, right? And views, you need to. Yeah, but it won't be related to proxy SQL. So this is why I, I was discussing earlier with people using views, and they say, yeah, I'm happy that will be possible to do the, this dumb stuff because they, the, the views uh, it's complicated for the index, for example. So uh, for them to test won't help that much. So in this case, it will be much more easier for them to test because the goal is to to give the data that looks like uh, production to developers to be able to test, right, without knowing uh, what's in the prediction. So, uh, so in our example here, we will give, uh, we will create a, us a user developer that will have a statement modified. So, in Proxy SQL, you can say, okay, uh, when everybody connects on the system, only certain user will need to uh, to go in the rules and uh, apply all these rules. So, also. 
so we have these two, um, two, two different solutions, like uh, live access or uh, dump, but also we can have two different categories of uh, masking the, the data. One is data masking, so there I will just uh, apply a mask on top of the data. So for example, uh, I will show you what it is. And uh, or data obfuscating, so ge uh, generating fake data. So data masking, so we will just mar uh, mask the data with some generic characters, and I can say uh, do I want or not uh, the data, uh, the original data part of it or not. So for example, here, uh, if I do a, a select on the very famous employees database uh, um, that you can find on the internet. So this is the data, uh, let's say, that uh, you have uh, normally. And with the ma masking here, you see, I just say, okay, for the first name, I want just to uh, display the first two characters and the rest will be masked by uh, X. You can choose whatever you want. This is a rule in ProxySQL and I will show you uh, after how, how you do that. Then uh, data obfuscating is replacing the data with fake data but that looks like the, the real one. So uh, because then uh, you can still check your application, right? So if your application is looking for integers and you, you hide them with X uh, or with a random character, the application will have an issue, right? Or if you put only nines, the result will be always the same, something like that. So, for example, here we go uh, check uh, uh, the birth date, right, of uh, Mr. Facello here, and every time we, the thing, the, the only thing is that every time we're going to run it, we will have a date that will be random, right? Sorry? Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> but I, I mean. So every time you, you will make the rule, of course, the date will change. So be aware of that. For example, we will show you how to do uh, with, uh, in the employee database, we have salaries, right? So uh, maybe the CEO uh, will have uh, less salary than the, the cleaning lady, because you don't know that. It's just random numbers, right? But at least it's numbers, not some characters that you cannot uh, manipulate. So this is the difference between the masking and uh, obfuscating. So to access uh, this, you need to create in ProxySQL a user. You need that for the data masking stuff, but you need that for uh, routing, multiplexing, mirroring, for everything. You need to create a user. So here we're going to just create a, a, a devil user, and we give them, uh, he has to be active, and the default host group will be, will be one. But the, the host group is where uh, it will connect and which rules it will have. Uh, and here we create another user, for, for making the dumps. So for the backup stuff, right? So you will make a dump. So we will use another user because the rules will be different, okay? So for example, the first rule we need to do when we want to try to uh, mask or obfuscate the data, it's avoid select star. If we let pe people do uh, select star, they will see all the data, right? So we need to change that. So uh, we need to create some rules to block the sel uh, select star and all the variant of select star because there is many ways to write it. Uh, and uh, so uh, the only thing here, uh, the only good way to do it or the let's say, less painful way to do it is that avoid. Not trying to change the data when they do select star. Just say, no, no, select star you cannot do. So this is uh, what we do. Uh, and uh, yeah, if this column, the column we want to hide is part of multi multiple table, we need to do uh, avoid the select star on, on the multiple, uh, on, on all of them, right? So then the second rule is that when the, the field we want to hide or to obfuscate, it's part of the query, then we need to catch it and we need to uh, change it. Uh, so we need to replace uh, the column by what we want to do. So in this case, remember the first name was, I was showing the two first characters. So we do the same and some X uh, or generate a random string or, or whatever I want. So we need to, find, uh, to do that. But we need also to keep the column name. And this is quite tricky. This is, uh, I would say, the, the most difficult part when, when you write the query is to keep the column name that they decide because people can choose the column name they want. You can do, oh, I want to select first name as uh, computer. And then yes, we be computer in the result. 
and, and plus the, the value of, the, of that first name, right? And so this is what it is where regular expressions are very uh, useful but are maybe complex. For MySQL done, we need to allow the select star, but then we need to uh, uh, mask uh, everything inside of it. So here we're gonna uh, review all, uh, all this, uh, the rules for the direct access. So not for the dump, for the user that has uh, access for the live data. You wanna Should I go this? this? Just show the rules. Okay, this was for the dump, right? So here we're gonna mask the first name uh, on the table uh, okay. employee. And the nice stuff is that you need seven rules to be able to do that. It's not only one rule. Yes. Yes. Remember that uh, Rene told you, you can, rules can be, uh, there is a flow that can follow. So you need to find uh, the, the, the field, and you need to change, find the name, change, uh, again and again and again. So this is what we're gonna show you. So in this case, the first rule, what it does is basically the rule is active every time username endeavor is used on the schema employee. And every time it sees this pattern, so everything that has a star, first name, it will just be replaced with, with first name, with just this word. And then the second rule, and okay, I mean, <laughs> there is no need to read this one, right? But I mean, this is, will be rule number two, so it will be executed immediately after the previous one. And uh, what it will do is that every time this sees this, this pattern, it will replace with this one. So you, here you have back reference, and the back reference are being called here. So here the important stuff is that we use concat to, to, to generate this fake data or, or, or this. Uh, so we, what the um, MySQL receive from the proxy is just a select concat of the first, in this case, the, the first two characters and the, the X we want, right? Yeah. The important, one of the other important things to notice here is that we have apply equals zero. So this means it's telling the proxy, this is not the last rules that you have to process, but there might be others that might match. So this also means that the previous one, if it has replaced first name with the stars into first name, the, the rewritten queries will be processed also, will mostly be processed by this regular expression. Okay, then. This the is the same, but for, uh, for obfuscate the, the, the data. Yes. So not r random uh, mask it, but made, uh, uh, let's say, random information. Now. Exactly. So now this one, what it does is the salary, instead of extracting the salary, the original salary, the way it was, it will just replace with this, this pattern that is nothing more than generating a random number, multiplying just by 50,000 and adding 10,000. This basically means uh, put a salary between 10,000 and 60,000. And, uh, and basically that's it. So to replace the original query, replacing salaries with, with this. And this was still for obfuscating, yes. So yeah. again, then the first name is replaced, whatever it was here is going to be replaced with, uh, it will be copied as it is, and this part will be, will be replaced. Maybe one thing important is this uh, regular uh, expression modifiers yeah. that are part of the new uh, version of uh, ProxySQL. Yes, so those two modifiers specifically, they are not present in uh, version 1.3 and previous. And uh, so basically in version 1.3, everything was caseless. So the, regular, the matching and the replace was, was caseless, uh, but global was not enabled. So this was, this was creating things complicated because if you had first name uh, repeated multiple time in one single query, you have to go recursive. So you have to repeat the same rules over and over again. The way of doing it recursive was setting a flag out different than null. So it will tell the proxy, okay, uh, this specific rules will set a flag out that will be, become the flag in of the next query. So the proxy will search not for the rules with flag in equal zero, but the rules that will have flag in equal to what has been set as flag out. Sounds complex, but it's actually, with, if we make an example, it makes the things look easier. So it basically creates some chains inside the query rules. 
So this is uh, another rule that basically says that every time there is a select star, no matter in which order, the select star is being, uh, the query is being rejected, and what the application will get is an error. So the, the application will get the error saying that this specific query cannot be executed. Does it really matter what there is after the employee, if there is any workloads or not, the application will get an error. And uh, I know of cases in which proxy SQL has been used as, a, uh, and the query rules has been used as a whitelist. So in the query rules, you have all the queries that are possible to be executed, and whatever is not listed is just being rejected. So this is an option, yes. Is there a thing for like warning message? Like, no, because a warning message, you still have to send the results at. Oh, no, if I still send the results at the next one, I'm like, this query has to be modified if they want it. Mm, there is no such option. Uh, but why would you want to do this? Just to let you know the application that something has changed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm... Um, feature request. Yes, sounds like a feature request. <laughs> Same things, but for another table. Before it was for uh, same table. Yes. When you specify. Yes. So this is same table, but now here you have employee as specified as well. So if you are trying to avoid specifying select employee dot star, also this case, this query is being rejected. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, this is more like firewall rules, so what we are speaking here. So you are specifying that everything that match a select without a where is being rejected. You can do this. The, the best solution will be to mix both, in fact. But we don't want to uh, draw you with plenty. Already seven words is quite uh, uh, heavy, right? So, but uh, the best way will be to select what you allow. So make the, the firewall first, and then the obfuscation or the masking you want, right? So you need both to be even more secure. I don't say even then, maybe still not yet secure enough, but I mean, it's, it increases the security uh, or, or the, the way you can, let's say, uh, hide your data, your sensible data. The good thing is that rules can be, uh, you can have multiple rules that apply to the same query. And one rule can rewrite the query, so the second rule will apply changes based on the written query, not on the original one. So you can avoid to have very complex rules, but just chain them one after the other. Okay, so the next step is about MySQL dump. Yes. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah, so the principle, the principle is very much the same. I actually brought about this a couple of days back. So let's assume that you have your production database and you want to uh, populate your staging environment using data that looks very similar to what you have in, um, in production. But of course, you don't want to have exactly the same data that you have in production. So the way of doing this is that, as Fred was saying, of course, you need to have valid data. So if you have an integer, you, you cannot just put X there because otherwise it won't be an integer anymore. And of course, again, you don't want to see real data, so you don't want to show real salaries in the example of the employee uh, schema. So if you are familiar with how MySQL dump works, it's very simple, it's just a select star from table name. So what we can do is we can just identify which are the select statement executed by TCP dump sorry, by MySQL dump, that are very known statement, and we can rewrite them. Of course, you don't have to rewrite everything just for the data that we consider to be sensitive, we perform the rewrite. Everything else, it will be copied as this. So, if you run MySQL dump, what it will execute is a select. Actually, here there is a mistake, because this should not be here. Um, so, if it is, a, because this is an anchor, the, the, the beginning at the anchor, so this is not be here. So if it is a select uh, SQL no cache from salary tables, this is the query that MySQL dump will execute. It has to become SQL no cache. Of course, there is a select that is there that nobody changed it because these rules won't change the select part. And uh, this tables has 
uh, three columns, employee number from date to date. So what will do this part, it will just replace um, the, uh, the salary actually four column. Employee number, salary, so th those three columns are copied as they are, while the salary columns has, is being changed with this. So just some random numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do we have an example of the output? Yeah, you will show an example. Okay. So, uh, Let's see, I don't remember how many columns there are in the employee uh, tables, but we can actually count them. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten columns. So we replace the select star with the list of columns and how we want to modify them. So employee number, this is copied as it is. Uh, the, no, actually this is this hand here. So the birth date is being modified, so it takes the first two columns of the birth date and change everything else. And does the same thing for the first name, it copied the first two and then it put as much as X as was left from the length of the uh, name. Same things for the last name. And then the gender is copied as it is, no need to obfuscate this one and the higher date is, is copied as it is as well. Yeah, so in, in the here, what's important is that if you do it for the dump, you will need to explicitly decode all the, the columns you want and then change the one you want, right? So, uh, and uh, this is wha what you need to play with, uh, with the proxy rules to be able to do that. Then what are the limitations when you use this solution is that, well, as you have seen, uh, 1.4 went out Sunday, but uh, so you need to use 1.4. So if you have 1.3, uh, you, won't, you won't be able to make all these fancy rules. Uh, yeah, all the fields with the same name currently will be masked. So if you have a salary the sal in the salary table, it will be masked. But if you have, a, I don't know, a, a salary in a test table, it will be masked. So proxy square will say, oh, this is salary, same schema, I will mask it. There is no table check, at least with the rules we provide. So maybe you can try to find a rule and then make with the old chart, uh, but then you will create very complex uh, rules. So with the rules we gave you uh, here, the, one of the limitations is that the same field name will be masked everywhere. Mask or obfuscated depending the, the, what technique you, you have choose to, to hide the data. Uh, like I said earlier, and this is very important, the reg apps may not be sufficient. So we try to test several cases, and I will show you the case, but uh, it's, it's, you, can, you may have uh, uh, not everything. So that's why the white list uh, is very important. Also, uh, yeah, here we, we made a small script uh, in Bash to generate this, uh, these rules for you to, 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 to try to test it. And uh, yeah, you can find it there. It's called mask it, and then you put the data you want, and it will create the rules for you. So it's quite easy to, as a first step, right? So now we're gonna show you example. Select star from employees, we need, it need to works. So we have seen you, uh, we have shown you that uh, we will deny it, uh, but it will work. So if we have time, we will run them, and I will show you. Uh, but we also here, for example, we need uh, first name, we want to, when we give all the, mm, uh, all the columns, we need to, it need to works. So it works. This is three, uh, the two very easy. But yeah, we had some uh, suggestion from uh, community people because we blog about this. For example, when you do this, so he has a concat in it, so when the, the uh, when the column is part of a function, it need to works. So we, the rules you have seen, this is why they are so complicated, because it takes, thank you, it takes care uh, uh, of that. So here, uh, when you, uh, when you, ch you, you, you change, you, you add the schema, it needs to work. So, so when you change a bit all the, uh, let's say, uh, the way you, you do the query, it needs to work. When you, you, you start, uh, adding this, uh, I don't know how you call them uh, in, in, in English, these uh, things there, so the, these I characters, know. right? Yes, it need to works. A tick, yeah, but it's not a back tick because in the end. 
yeah, back tick, it needs to work, right? Here, when you have multiple lines, so because you can enter a, a query in multiple lines in, in MySQL, there's no issue on that. It still needs to work. So all the rules we have seen you take care of, of this. And again, it's not finished. So when you give a, a name of a table that doesn't exist, but here you, you make ask for the name, it needs to work. And that's not that easy to, uh, to do. So why I show you that is this. This is why the rules are so complicated. Because the use cases are so many, and even then with all what we did here, it maybe it's not enough, we, we need to take care of that. So that's why I, I told you earlier, the best way to do it is if the server was, will be able to do it, right? So here, we, yeah, it's all example when you give a, a, another column name uh, to the column you want, with the as, without the as, when you take the as, when you do like kind, that kind of fancy stuff, it still needs to work, right? So the rules take care of all that. When we do all this kind of stuff, all that, it works. So all these queries, if you don't modify like you have now, are, uh, are working. So it means they are not passing, they are obfuscated. And yeah, when you put comments into it, uh, uh, when you put empty comments, uh, when you change the, the stuff, all that, uh, uh, need to work. These need to be blocked. These need to be blocked, for example, that kind of stuff. Yeah, this need to pass. Uh, but I mean, all that uh, needs to work, right? So this is example I wanted to show you uh, live. So <laughs> this uh, slide is we need you. It means if you find some queries that pass, just send us to us and we will try to make the rules for you uh, to... Uh, um, no guarantee. Uh, it's just challenge in, uh, in our free time uh, because it's fun, but uh, that's it. So this is how you can use proxy SQL uh, to, uh, uh, to bypass that, right? Uh, so first I will go for a question, and then if we have one minute, I had one question to say, can I show the, config the, the configuration of that, right? It was you, I, I can show you the configuration uh, afterward. So do you have question on this? Yes? Why seven, you mean, or why, uh, or how many, if I had a really complex case, how many rules? There have been cases in which thousands of rules have been created. And of course, you need to find also some way of optimizing them. Because as I was saying, you, you are able to chain rules. So instead of having them sequentially, you can create some shortcut. Like everything that match select, so, or select for a specific table, then you create a specific rules, a set of rules just for that rules, for that table, instead of passing through all the other rules. Okay. In a way, you should create index, let's say. So a way of jumping from one place to another one. You can answer a question while I show it live. The yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, and I, I might have misunderstood, but if we added a, uh, a comment to our code or SQL command that gets sent to proxy, would that be a better way of identifying, uh, like, based off the residence rules? You can create uh, matching criteria also based on the content of the comment, yes. Yes, you can do this. Any other question? Or you have the, the demo ready? Yeah, yeah, while you are talking, uh, I was yeah. showing it. And so people okay. can, can see how it works. So thank you for attending. And if you have questions, just grab us. Thank you. Thank you.